Thank you. Ms. Enriquez, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Um, and thank you to your court for accommodating us so timely and quickly. Um, just a bit of procedural history on these two cases without getting into the facts. The first, cause number 715807, the complaining witness is the defendant's 16-year-old stepson, Jonathan Balderas. Um, without getting into the facts of his case, when he was magistrated for that offense, there was also a magistrate's um, order of emergency pr protection. The bond conditions only include Jonathan Balderas, but the magistrate's order covered Jonathan Balderas, but, and since he's a minor, his mother, which is Rebecca Pantoja, our client's wife, and also his minor stepdaughter, or excuse me, um, sister, which is our client's stepdaughter, um, Rosaya Balderas. Um, the violation of the bond condition or protective the emergency protective order, not the bond condition. So the complaining witnesses on the on the violation of protective order is Rebecca Pantoja, who was covered by the emerg magistrate's emergency protective order. Um, just procedurally, we have we filed something with with the magistrate court, and that um, order for emergency protective for emergency protection has been modified to expire. It was originally set to expire on November 30th of 2023. Um, Magistrate Judge Jeb Locke modified it to expire on um, September 9th, which was this Saturday. So that one is no longer in place and that's the basis of the violation of the protective order case. So I would like to, in the waiting room, we have the 16-year-old minor, Jonathan Balderas, um, who is the complainant in the family assault family household case, and his mother, Rebecca Pantoja, who's the complaining witness in the violation of protective order case. So I would like to call um, Rebecca Pantoja at this time. Okay, bring her in, please. And just briefly, Your Honor, um, I will also add to the record before I ask Ms. Pantohani questions that I did confer with ADA Kathleen O'Reilly on the 5th of September, one week ago today. And she did indicate to me that in her system and notes from the district attorney's office, she did see notes that the district attorney's office has spoken to uh, Ms. Pantoja, and it is her wish that he, um, he not be prosecuted for these cases. That's fine. That's, she do, she that's doesn't correct. have the authority to make that decision. I'll hear correct. her testimony. So correct. let's swear her in. Uh, Ms. Um, Pantoja, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Should you make a false statement or lie to this court? I do. And could you please uh, state your full name and spell it for the court, please? Rebecca Pantoja, R-E-B-E-C-C-A. Last name is P-A-N-T-O-J-A. And Ms. Pantoja, you're going to be asked questions by um, your family's attorney, Ms. Megan Enrique, first. And um, I anticipate that then that will be followed by cross-examination from the prosecutor, Ms. Blair. So I'm instructing you to cooperate not only with uh, Ms. Enriquez, but with Ms. Blair as well. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Enriquez, the witness is uh, yours now. Rebecca, you know that you're, or who is Joseph Benya to you? What is y'all's relationship? He is my fiance. Okay. And Prior to August 26th of 2023, did y'all reside together? Yes. Okay. And did your two children, ages 16 and 14, also reside with y'all? Yes. Okay. And your son, Jonathan Valderas, is listed as a complaining witness in a case involving um, your fiancé, Mr. Pena, correct? Correct. Okay. And 
we won't go into any facts of that case or the background, but it was based that I did confer with ADA Kathleen O'Reilly on the 5th of September, one week ago today. And she did indicate to me that in her system and notes from the district attorney's office, she did see notes that the district attorney's office has spoken to uh, Ms. Pantoja and it is her wish that he, um, he not be prosecuted for these cases. That's fine. That's, she do she that's doesn't correct. have the authority to make that decision. I'll hear correct. her testimony. So correct. let's swear her in. Ms. Um, Pantoja, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Should you make a false statement or lie to this court? I do. And could you please uh, state your full name and spell it for the court, please? Rebecca Pantoja, R-E-B-E-C-C-A. Last name is P-A-N-T-O-J-A. And Ms. Pantoja, you're going to be asked questions by um, your family's attorney, Ms. Megan Enrique, first. And um, I anticipate that then that will be followed by cross-examination from the prosecutor, Ms. Blair. So I'm instructing you to cooperate not only with uh, Ms. Enriquez, but with Ms. Blair as well. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Enriquez, the witness is uh, yours now. Rebecca, you know that you're, or who is Joseph Benya to you? What is y'all's relationship? He is my fiance. Okay. And prior to August 26th of 2023, did y'all reside together? Yes. Okay. And did your two children, ages 16 and 14, also reside with y'all? Yes. Okay. And your son, Jonathan Valderas, is listed as a complaining witness in a case involving um, your fiance, Mr. Benya, correct? Correct. Okay. And we won't go into any facts of that case or the background, but it was based on some very tragic, extenuating family circumstances involving your children, correct? Oh. Okay. And you know that there is a no contact order current in place as a result of, the, of these pending criminal charges, correct? Right. And those no contact orders cover um, no contact between Joseph Peña and your son, Jonathan Balderas, yourself, and your daughter, Rosaya Balderas, correct? Correct. Okay. And is it your wish to be able to have contact with your fiancé, Mr. Peña? Yes. Is it your wish that these this no contact order be modified to no harmful or injurious contact? Yes. Do you have any safety concerns involving Joseph Benya? No, ma'am. Are you in fear that he would ever hurt you? No, ma'am. That he would ever assault you? No, ma'am. That he would ever threaten you? No, ma'am. Has he ever assaulted or threatened you throughout the course of your relationship with him? Never. Okay. And is it your wish that it also be lifted regarding your two minor children that are 16 years old and 14 years old? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, is he a loving and protective father to your children, his stepchildren? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in fact, him being protective was kind of the basis of, of these charges, right? Uh, yes, sir. Without getting into any details of what happened. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any safety concerns with your regarding your children? No. No, no. Does he have a good relationship with your two children? Yes, sir. Okay. And as their parent... Um, and the adult are in speaking on behalf of them. Do you think it is their wish that he be able to have contact with them as well? I do. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and you have spoken to somebody from the district attorney's office, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Whoever I could, you know, but. Okay. And you signed a notarized affidavit. Um, for purposes of the order of emergency protect, protective order to be lifted 
And you also spoke to someone with the district attorney's office telling them that this was a tragic situation that led up to these charges and you want, well, first and foremost, for the purposes of this hearing, for the no contact order to be modified while these cases play out, correct? Correct. And then ultimately you, your wish, even though you don't have the authority to do it, it's going to be the discretion of the district attorney's office, but it is your wish that he not be prosecuted for these offenses, correct? Correct. Okay. But you understand that you don't get to make that decision and that that'll be the decision of the district attorney's office and their prosecutors, correct? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. At this time, I pass the witness, your honor. Before we continue with this proceeding, uh, Ms. Pantoja, where are you now with your child? We are in um, at home. He stayed home from school today. Okay. And your address is 8810 Mustang Pass? 8811. 8811. Yes, ma'am. And um, Mr. Peña, where, where are you? I am at, at my mother's house. Okay. I want Miss, uh, I'm ordering now, if you want me to continue to hear this, uh, Ms. Pantoja, I need you to go to your front door and show me your address. And Mr. Benny, I need you to go to your front door and show me your address. Okay. Uh, I, I'm connect actually my laptop is connected and it's going to die, Miss. You want me to continue with the hearing? We got to find a way for me to confirm you're both of you are not in the same place. And I'm asking for that because his background looks just like your background. And it would not be the first time that people are doing things in violation of my orders. And I need to confirm that you're not in the same place. Okay. One moment. Thank you. And Joseph, can you go ahead and go to your mother's front door as well? Yes, ma'am. You're on your cell phone, correct? You can carry it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. You're, you're good right there, Miss Miss uh, Pantoja. Stand by. Where do you go? Joseph, why is your video turned off? It needs to remain on at all times, sir. I need you outside in the front door, Mr. Benny. And I think he was having some te technical difficulties. He did the dial in on his phone, Judge, just mm -hmm. so you, you're aware. Ms. Ms. Pantoja, can you show me the, the number on your house, please? Uh, yes. Okay. Mr. Benny, I need to see the number in your mother's house. Oh, I saw him back. He's by the car. She's walking away. I just need to see the number on the house. Okay, back up, Mr. Benny. Can you please back up some more so I can see the number? Back up to the number on, on your mother's house. Show me the number on your mother's house. Keep going. I can't see that. Miss uh, my, my, well, my, my laptop is about to die. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and go back, Miss Miss uh, Pantoja, to where you were. Mr. Penny, I need I need you to show me the number in your mother's house. It's a little blurry, Joseph. Can you get closer, please? Okay, we're good. All right. We can continue now. Um Miss Blair, any cross examination of Miss Pantoja? Yes, Judge. I believe her laptop died, though. I don't see her anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, we can come back to her. I can control the order of witnesses. Uh, Ms. Enriquez, did you want to call another witness? No, Your Honor. Okay. We'll wait for her to reconnect. She, she should just be able to plug in, right? I hope so. <laughs> like, oh, well, we've got her testimony. I know Ms. Blair isn't entitled to cross-examine her. We'll wait for her to log back on. Mr. Pena, you can go back inside if that makes it easier for you to connect. We may lose him, too. Joseph, I'm sorry. you're. We're still waiting for her. To give me a letter saying we've done uh, 
an uh, intake and we've had three or four sessions, that's where they can have contact in the office of a family therapist. I want three or four sessions under their belt together. I want a professional to tell me this family is safe living together. It's, and then, it's, it's, and I, I'm not talking to you, Mr. Benio. I'm not going to uh, take a chance, Ms. Enriquez. I know you're doing your job. I'm doing my job. So today, the motion is going to be denied. And I need to, and, and you don't have to file another motion. You can file a letter on letterhead, or you can, you can get, ask for a hearing once you get a family therapist who has spent some time with this family together to tell the court that they find as professionals that they can reside safely together. That is the court's order. Okay, okay Your Honor, just so that I'm clear. So for purposes of the family counseling that you're ordering them to get, they can all have contact in the context of in front of a counselor, the four of that, them? That, and I'll give you one more, Ms. Enriquez. They can have contact on Sundays from 9 to 1. From okay. 9 to 1 to go to church and have something to eat together and, and start rebuilding those relationships. But I want to, if you want that no contact order lifted the remainder of the time, I need to hear from a family therapist who has done an intake and seen the family in their office three to four sessions. Okay, and Your Honor, if I may add, I don't want to get into the facts of the case, but one of the children that is covered that was covered by the order, Rosaya, the daughter, she is currently going into counseling as a result of what led up to these criminal charges. She was, I'll just say, she was the victim of a sexual assault by allegation by okay. Miss Mr. Pena's biological son, who is not anyone involved in this case. He is being prosecuted for sexual sexually assaulting his stepsister. And it was just a terrible situation. But they at least at least some of them are involved in counseling already, especially the daughter that is covered in the order. I know for a fact she's seeing a therapist. OK, I need a family therapist to see this family unit that you want this court to address. Mr. Okay. Uh, so Ms. Ms. Pantoja, Rosaya Balderas, Jonathan Balderas and Mr. Pena. Four times, four sessions. No. Those four individuals, I need a family therapist to be able to put their name to their letterhead saying, I've done an intake. I've done enough sessions to assess the safety of these four people living together. And I'm OK. It's OK that they live together. That's what that letter needs to say. OK. OK. And I need you to have a sit down with Mr. Pena, your client, and let him know. That my finding today is that they were at the same place today in violation by what I saw on camera and by what I saw on Google Maps. OK, so I need you to remind him to comply with this order or he may be picking up another charge. Understood, Your Honor. Thank you very much. That concludes our hearing today. I'll get the order out in the next five minutes and we'll go on to the next proceeding. Everyone is excused. Thank you, Your Honor. And can I come by the court and get a copy of that order just so I make sure we comply with it? Exactly you're going to get an email. I'm going to, you're going to get it by email. Okay. Even better. Thank you so much. Judge. Yes, ma'am. You'll get it in the next five minutes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am.